Hello folks, out here in the garage again, messing around with the uh, 125 amp flux core welder from Harbor Freight. Uh, I've already done some videos showing some testing of this welder, and I talked about the AC output and how I think that's holding it back quite a bit. So in this video, I'm going to see how much better it does if you convert it to a DC output in basically the simplest way possible. Now a lot of people have converted this machine over to DC output, and some of them will put uh, capacitors in there or chokes or things like that to try and smooth out the arc and uh, you know just get the best results they can. But today I'm going to be doing it in basically the simplest way possible. I'm just going to install a simple rectifier bridge, a full wave rectifier, uh, to convert the AC from the transformer into DC output, and that's it. I'm not going to put anything else in there. And then I'll do some test welds, cut and etch, and just kind of see what results we get, just so that we can see uh, how much this welder can be improved with just basically the bare minimum of DC conversion. Now a lot of people talk about using either 100 or 120 amp rectifiers, and I think that's mostly for the 90 amp version of this welder. Uh, but as I've said in my other videos, the 125 amp welder is essentially the same. It has the same 90 amp rated output and 125 amp max output specification. They just put a different number on the box. And sure enough, I saw you know reports of the 100 and 120 amp DC rectifiers burning out in some cases that people have used. So uh, I definitely wanted to go higher than that. And also, as my testing has shown with this welder, um, it, it can put out 140 amps plus uh, under the right conditions. So I certainly wouldn't go with anything less than 150 amp rectifier, uh, but I just went ahead and went with the next step up, which is a 200 amp, uh, just so that in theory at least this should be plenty, but we'll find out. And just a note, if you are going to be doing this conversion or you want to you know, convert your welder to DC, make sure you factor in all the little odds and ends you're going to have to have for the conversion before you make up your mind on whether or not it's worth doing it. Uh, hopefully we find out that we get satisfactory results with just the rectifier and we don't have to put extra capacitors and all that in there. But even if that's the case, um, you know, this is only, you know, 18 to $25, depending on where you find it. But you're still going to want, you know, uh, some pieces of wire. You're going to want some terminals, some hardware to bolt this down, you know, some little odds and ends of tools and supplies. So if you already have all of that, great. Uh, but if you don't, just, you know, bear in mind, there are a few other little things that you'll need other than just the rectifier. And most of that stuff doesn't amount to much, but, you know, depending on where you can actually find it and all that, it, it can add up a little bit. So just make sure you factor everything in. For me, all I really bought was the rectifier, some ring terminals to connect to the rectifier, and some wire that I'll be using inside. Now, I'm not really intending for this video to be, you know, an in-depth how-to as far as this conversion process. Mostly, I just want to do the testing after the conversion to see uh, how much performance we gain or if we gain any performance uh, after the conversion. But it is fairly simple. On the rectifier, you just have uh, AC terminals on the one side and your DC output terminals on the other side, and they are labeled negative and positive. And all you really have to do is put this in series with the output. So here we have the output from the transformer that goes to the work clamp, and here we have the output of the transformer that uh, goes to the mid gun that powers up the contact tip. So all you really have to do is um, just basically cut these wires hook the two uh, outputs from the transformer to the AC side of the rectifier, and then hook the work clamp to the positive side of the rectifier, and the wire feed side to the negative terminal of the rectifier. So I'll get started doing that. I'll show you what I come up with, and then I will put the welder back together and do some testing and see what kind of results we get. Okay, so I got all the wire splicing done on this side, and the wire up here from the transformer that feeds the MIG gun uh, I have that cut and spliced with the two wires again that go over to the rectifier. I got those soldered together with some heat shrink tubing on the joint, and I'm actually going to mount the rectifier over on the other side. A little bit more room over there. Also, these little wires that go up to the controls, those come directly off of the output of the transformer. So you definitely want to make your splices after those wires, or basically either way, just make sure that these wires end up uh, at the end on the AC side. And on this side, once again, uh, I got the wires all soldered and heat shrink tubing onto the terminals. And I've only got the AC side landed so far. I'm actually going to have the rectifier mounted right here. It's going to be bolted to this side panel. So basically, I'll screw it to the side panel and then just slip the side panel in place and screw it in. Now, these rectifiers do have a metal plate on the back, and that is essentially a heat sink. Uh, this will get hot, and that's how the diodes inside will actually dissipate heat is through this plate. Now, depending on 
um, you know, duty cycle and how close you're running to the diode's capability, that kind of thing. They may build up more or less heat, uh, but it's still a good idea to have these bolted to something metal that can pull that heat away. Um, you know, a heat sink is technically ideal, but in this case, I'm just going to have it bolted to the side panel, which is metal and will kind of help dissipate the heat. Also, the airflow from the fan will be kind of blowing through that panel all the time. So hopefully that should be enough heat sink. If I find that it's getting too hot, um, you know, maybe I'll do something about it. But uh, with it bolted directly to that panel, you know, I can check with my temp gun after I use it and just make sure that that's not getting too hot. But at this point, we're just about ready to go. I just have to get the wires kind of arranged how I want to go so that I can get the rectifier in there, drill some holes in the side panel, get that mounted, and then uh, we can fire this thing up and do some testing. Okay, so I'm all finished up. Uh, you can probably just barely see the rectifier there, kind of behind all those wires. It is just screwed to the side panel back there. So everything's wired up and ready to go. I just have to put this last side panel on the welder and I will fire it up and do some testing, see how it does. Okay, so I got the machine together and did some welding with it. And I have a couple of sample joints here that I will go over in a second, but I just want to say that the way I did this conversion was the simplest possible, pretty crude. All I did was put a rectifier in it. So it does run okay, uh, but you get a little bit of stutter at the starts and the arc is pretty rough. It's not very smooth or anything. So, you know, it's definitely the simplest, crudest way to do it because, you know, this is a cheap welder and, you know, just the cost and the simplicity of this welder is what makes it popular. So while there are definitely more things you could do to make the arc better, but I just wanted to see uh, what kind of results I could get with just the simplest DC conversion. Also, um, that rectifier bridge does get pretty warm. Uh, I do have it bolted to that side plate of the case, so uh, that does give me some heat uh, transfer. And as long as I didn't do, um, you know, just back-to-back -back long runs, the temperature stayed okay. Uh, didn't get any hotter than about 140 degrees or so. But if I had a big project where I was doing a lot of continuous welds, I would probably want a, an actual dedicated heat sink on that. Um, so there again, you know, just something to keep in mind, you know, for as far as complexity and cost and stuff, if you're actually going to do this, uh, you might just want to keep an eye on those temps or uh, just get a dedicated heat sink for that. But now let's take a look at the results. Uh, first off, this is a joint that I did with the welder in stock form. Uh, I cut and etched this for the last video, but this was done with the, the welder with AC output. And uh, sorry, it's starting to kind of corrode because the stuff I put on there to etch it has been sitting on there for a while. So it's kind of corroded, but... You can still get a good idea of the weld. Really kind of no tie-in right at the toe. Super high crowned bead. Not a whole lot of penetration. There's actually a, a hole down here at the root. And then a just a very little bit of penetration on this uh, upright portion. But really not a lot of penetration. And this was actually the best penetration on 3 16 material I was able to get uh, with the welder in its stock form with uh, AC output. Uh, and on this side you can see uh, this was with the welder turned down just a little bit. Um, and in this case, definitely didn't get down into the root. Uh, virtually no tie-in on this uh, bottom piece and only the tiniest bit on this vertical section. So again, this is how the welder did originally with AC output. Really high crowned welds, uh, not a lot of penetration, not getting down into the root. So like I said, this was about the best I got on 3 16 material with the uh, welder stock. After installing the rectifier and converting to DC, uh, you can see a pretty different story. Now, this was with the welder maxed out, and this was with it turned down just a little bit uh, to get just a little bit smoother arc and a little bit flatter bead. Uh, and you can see in both cases, I got pretty decent penetration. Again, this was with the welder turned down a little bit. Not super deep penetration, but it is tied in all the way along and, and even all the way right to the toe. Uh, on both sections, it is tied in right to the toes. Uh, not super far into the root, but you know, but it does, it does go down in there. Um, you know, there might be a little bit of a lack of tie-in right there, so maybe not super deep down into the root, but uh, not too bad. So even, even turned down a little bit for a flatter bead profile, uh, we are getting a lot better penetration than we did uh, with any kind of settings or travel speed or anything like that uh, when the welder had AC output. Now over here, uh, the welder was maxed out, and I do have a little bit higher crown of a bead, but not too bad, certainly not as bad as we had on AC, um, with with a lot of the welds, but you can see uh, pretty darn good penetration. Uh, the penetration right here at this toe is very shallow, but I don't think there's a total lack of fusion there. In fact, if I kind of uh, draw a line there, you can see, um, you know, it is tied in all the way to the toe there. So not a ton of penetration, but it is tied in all the way to the toe. Definitely tied in all the way to the toe here. And I flipped the part because of the way my light was, but uh, you can see 
definitely getting down into that root uh, with the welder maxed out. So after converting to DC, uh, definitely a lot better penetration. Not quite as good as um, you know a factory DC output welder, or probably not as good as you could get if you put a little bit more time and a little bit more components into uh, fully converting this welder. But it just goes to show that even with the crudest form of DC output on this welder, uh, very, pretty significant difference in the penetration and weld profiles. So that's pretty much it. I'm uh, not going to do a ton of testing in this video, but uh, either way, now you have at least one piece of data to know what kind of a difference it will actually make in the end. So if you have any questions, post them up down below. As always, thank you for watching. Take care.